Changes, Television for Humans. This is, I'm your host, Emmanuel Coleman, and today we're going to be meeting with a wonderful guest who's going to teach us a very exciting way of bringing ourselves into harmony. And she has had an extraordinary career and is still extremely young, which is absolutely <laughs> delightful. And I'd like you to all meet Lisa Loving Dalton. Welcome to Changes. Thank you, Emmanuel. It's really wonderful to have been invited today. Well, we're very thrilled to have you here, and I'm going to start off by asking you about the little Isis character, oh, because that is so exquisite. <laughs> it's very interesting, because uh, I married a, a biker, kind of a rowdy Hells Angel-looking type biker. You look like the kind of person who yep. would. I am an, I'm an avid motorcyclist. <laughs> well, we'll get to that. We'll and everybody. He, and it, this, this was the very first piece of jewelry that he ever got for me. Mm. And I, he, we hadn't even discussed the, the fact that I was a, a deep ISIS fan for her powers of transformation and change. Okay. And her ability to go into the underworld and come back and, mm -hmm. and transform. And um, as an actress, this, this was something that I held very closely. But I thought, actually, that he got it hot. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he, it was a hot item, and yeah. it was at the time in New York, we were living in the village, when a uh, big Egyptian exhibit was at the Metropolitan Museum. So you thought maybe it was the original? So, well, I didn't think it was the original, but I thought okay. it was, you know, it was hot, because I couldn't imagine that he, A, would even know that it was ISIS. I mm -hmm. thought maybe he thought it was the biker thing. And well, it was very much like a Harley Davidson yeah. symbol, too. So. Yes. <laughs> and, and B, that he would have actually purchased it mm -hmm. with any sort of cognition of how it would relate to me. And years later, when I discovered more about my own spirituality, because at that point I was more or less an atheist, uh, <laughs> um, I bumped into the fellow who designed it. And mm -hmm. he said, oh, you must be Kenny's wife. And I said, pardon me? He goes, I made that for you. <laughs> wow. Well, that, was, that was a very divine intervention. Yes. Well, let, we, let's talk about some of the changes that you've gone through and the, the depths of the underworld that you've reached. <laughs> because you, you've had quite a career. Yeah. I, I don't recall which was the beginning of it. Was it the acting or, or the stunt work? Well, it was an actress and uh -huh. as a director. Okay. And I started that very, very young. Uh, very, very little. I directed, wrote, directed, produced, uh, and uh, acted in my first play when I had just turned 10 years old. Okay. The Feast of the Annunciation. <laughs> and I designated myself as Elizabeth. I was already uh, the character actress, and I think Elizabeth was uh, a, uh, a guide for me, mm -hmm. in fact. As I have come to learn later, Lisa being a derivation of that. I didn't know all that then, but um, I became uh, very disillusioned in college with method acting, with the process of recalling your own memories. Mm -hmm. I had a pretty lovely upbringing, and uh, but my big brothers beat me up a little bit, and I was a super tomboy. Mm -hmm. um, Which all served be. you later anyway. Yes, absolutely. And, um, and so I... I went off into the world of the avant-garde theater mm -hmm. in college and eventually moved to New York and went into an avant-garde theater company at the La Mama Theater, mm -hmm. Bond Street Theater Coalition, and de really developed my mime and juggling and stage combat and uh, clowning skills and impersonation skills mm -hmm. and wound up becoming a stunt woman because of my of, of all of those skills. So for 10 years in New York, I did stunts on films like Splash and Ghostbusters. And Just give us a quick synopsis of yeah. some of your more exciting moments. Um, <laughs> more exciting moments. Well, I think uh, getting hit by cars, that's, that's pretty exciting. And I, I, Intentionally. Yes, I got yeah. killed on, um, I think it was One Life to Live, or Guiding Light. I can't remember. Okay. I mean, what are the soap operas? I got killed on it as for a character. Every three years, we'd do a lot of stunts because contracts would come up for the actors, and they'd kill them off. Well, 
then I got that character got brought back, so she was actually not from actually the dead. yes from well she, they decided she didn't actually die she was oh, in a coma. Oh, oh, okay, <laughs> we, weren't, we weren't quite that spiritual yet. Yes, <laughs> okay. so she came back. Um, I had to fall off a bridge for mm -hmm. a, a schizophrenic soap opera actress. That right. was interesting. I stunt doubled Madonna on Saturday Night Live, uh -huh. and. Um, she doesn't do her own stunts? Well, no. <laughs> and I got to work with Cher and mm -hmm. Meryl Streep and uh, some of the great, great actors, Robert Redford and Sean mm -hmm. Connery and um, Catherine Hepburn. Wonderful. A um, lot, lot of really great, great actors, mm -hmm. Lucille Ball and um, many of the people who inspired me, Dick Van Dyke and Sid Caesar. My goodness. So, but this is with great. stunt work or with also? With stunts. What and about your acting career? Where I was, did that go? I was always working on the acting mm -hmm. the whole time I was doing that. Um, and then I discovered Michael Chekhov's acting technique. Mm -hmm. And that opened up my entire spiritual path and uh, brought my acting to a level that m really thrilled me. No, this isn't the writer Chekhov. This is. It's his nephew. It is. Oh, it is yes, a relation. It's Very his good. nephew. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael was the uh, considered the greatest. Is still today considered the greatest actor that Russia ever produced. Mm -hmm. He encountered. He was one of Stanislavsky's students, and Stanislavsky is considered the father of Western acting, mm -hmm. and was uh, one of the co-founders of the Moscow Art Theater, which mm -hmm. was the most famous theater company in the world and which was the originator of the method of mm -hmm. acting. And this is Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando, Brando, yes, all of that. Yeah. But although in truth, Marlon really was much more heavily influenced by Stella Adler. Okay, and um, but were they not? But they're of, associated, of a, yeah, yes. of a likeness. And uh, Stella was very influenced by Stanislavski, as mm -hmm. was Lee Strasberg and Sanford Meisner. Mm -hmm. um, however, S Stanislavski was developing his work in the Freudian era. Mm -hmm. um, and so Stanislavski and his counterparts, Sulerzhitsky and Nemirovich Danchenko, the, the trinity of people who were the Moscow Art Theater heads, were very interested in the Freudian psychoanalysis process. So they were experimenting with this process of accessing your personal memories. Mm. Michael Chekhov had a severely dysfunctional upbringing, a severely dysfunctional upbringing. Right. And so reality was simply not an option for him. Mm -hmm. And when he was supposed to do something, recalling from his personal life, act out a scene, he did the death of his father. And Stanislavski stood up and said, that's it, that's an example of my method. And then he realized Michael's father was not dead. Oh. <laughs> and Michael had crafted it out of his imagination. Okay. And he suspended Michael, but Michael was the greatest actor, so he, of course, he had to bring him back. <laughs> bring him back. Because he had done a really wonderful job. Yeah. Convinced everybody. Yeah. <clears throat> and Michael hit a point where he couldn't understand how being a brilliant actor mm -hmm. was a valid thing to be during the height of the Russian Revolution, 1917, mm -hmm. 1918. And mm -hmm. he went through a deep spiritual crisis, wouldn't come out of his room for a year. Mm. And when he finally did come out, was walking down the street one day and saw a book by Rudolf Steiner, Knowledge of Higher Worlds and Its Attainment. And he's kind of laughed, ha, oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, right, if, if that were an option, why wouldn't everybody already know it? Mm -hmm. But he doubled back and he got the book and that shifted his whole life. He became very deeply involved with Rudolf Steiner's um, philosophy mm -hmm. or spiritual science called anthroposophy. Right. And he mixed that with the Stanislavski base, really highly, highly developing his realm of imagination mm -hmm. and his uh, what he called psychophysical connection, the relationship of the body to the energy field and the imagination. So he was so able to concentrate on images and mm -hmm. gestures, movements, mm -hmm. that he could send a picture into space and audiences could see it. How do you mean that? Well, he create he did a production of Hamlet and mm -hmm. there's the character of the ghost the f of Hamlet's father. Mm -hmm. He had no actor actually play it. He had an actor off stage do the voice. He concentrated on the image. 
so that everybody clubs. was focused yes. to the same point of yes. view, even though there was nothing there. Yes, and Wonderful. they saw it night after night. So the Soviet government decided this was not acceptable. Oh, really? And they decided that he had to stop that. He had to stop teaching Steiner's work. He had to stop any of that spooky stuff. Mm. And um, when he refused, they decided to kill him. Different times. Yes, so he escaped because uh -huh. he had friends in high places. Uh -huh. And eventually he wound up as a coach here in Hollywood to people <laughs> like uh, Marilyn Monroe and mm. Gregory Peck and Anthony Quinn and um, Yul Brenner and... He was fluent yeah. in English or...? He became fluent in English. Wow. Um, it's quite a skill in itself. It, it's an, um, an amazing How old was process. he when he came to the States? Well, he was born in 1891, and he came to the United States on a tour in 1935. Uh-huh. So... Oh, is that, and that's when he left? So, uh, he escaped from Russia in 1928. Uh -huh. And okay. toured through Europe, kind of lost, really deeply mm -hmm. lost. He, he thought he was going to do spiritual theater. He had this vision mm -hmm. that theater should be a healing experience for the actor and for the audience. Mm -hmm. And he crafted a production in Paris that ha was very esoteric. It was a fairy tale, mm -hmm. working with archetypes and myths and about crossing the threshold and going into the abyss. and all sorts of stuff, and it had no dialogue. Uh, it was composed, uh, had an incredible music score, live mm -hmm. musicians. And they went on strike in Paris. The musicians all went on strike on opening night. So Specifically because of this production? No, uh, no just, 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 it just was, it was okay. timing. Okay. And so they, uh, only a few of the musicians showed up, and. Mm -hmm the whole production was way over everybody's heads. Uh -huh. So the audiences were really entertained by it, but the critics didn't... Didn't support it. Didn't get it, yeah. and it really broke his heart, mm -hmm. uh, ver very uh, painfully. Um, but he was invited back to Latvia and Lithuania where he could act in Russian mm -hmm. and teach, and he began teaching there. And then on tour uh, in the United States, he met both Stella Adler and Beatrice Strait, who mm -hmm. uh, was an Oscar winner for Network, wonderful actress. Right. Um, the same night, they both saw Michael Chekhov and mm -hmm. came backstage. And when Stella had gone to Paris to work with Stanislavski, and it was a very critical moment in the evolution of American acting techniques because Stanislavski told her that the group theater, which mm -hmm. was working on the method, was doing it wrong. And <laughs> he said, find Michael Chekhov. Uh -huh. He's the one to follow now. Uh -huh. And she came back and told Lee Strasberg and Sandy Meisner and all the other mm -hmm. uh, people that, that this was that not... That was the commentary. Yes, yeah. that was the commentary. And, and there was a big split there. And then mm. now we have our most famous acting techniques would be with Stella and with Strasberg and with Sandy Meisner. Um, all of whom actually were, were great believers in Michael Chekhov, but they didn't think that what he did was teachable. Mm -hmm. So when did you encounter his work? 1980, uh -huh. uh, I encountered it, and it, it was a miraculous uh, event for me. I mm -hmm. did the most amazing work I'd ever done, and I didn't know what had been done to me. Mm -hmm. And the director who directed me in a play with it, um, Wilfred Hunt, mm -hmm. um, and if we can ever find Wilfred, I want to thank you. <laughs> okay, maybe um, he'll be watching. Yeah, um, The Fox, we did a production of The Fox, um, mm -hmm. D.H. Lawrence novel, mm -hmm. with no dialogue, again. Uh -huh. Full play, with, and we were all highly trained mimes, but it was a full play, uh, without dialogue. And so nobody was speaking? Nobody was speaking. Again, an original uh -huh. piano score, beautifully done, fully propped, and, but every movement, had a power, an invisible power, that mm -hmm. had to communicate. So the script had the novel on one side and movement notations on the other side. Has this been transferred into film or videotape at all? No. Oh, it sounds like something that would really transfer very yes. well. Well, there was an adaptation, an up-tempo up adaptation, I think, in the 60s in a Canadian uh -huh. film with dialogue, but this non-verbal... No, I'd like to see the, yeah. the, the non-verbal. But we had a... a Again, it's a, a remarkable disaster occur mm -hmm. on opening night in New York. Um, uh, not opening night 
final dress rehearsal, the police department, I mean the fire department came into the theater that we had rented and found in the subcellar um, violations and closed the building and locked it. And we couldn't get in to change the answering machine to uh -huh. cancel the, uh -huh, let people the, the know. Me and, and, and the, um, and we, I was friends with a gentleman who owned one of the Broadway theaters uh -huh. uh, that Sugar Babies had been as a, the old Latin Quarter, which is a very wide, broad stage. And he invited seven Broadway producers, and the director, who was one of the actors, and mm. his associate, who was the other actress, the three of us, uh -huh. mimed the whole production with the piano score on a Broadway stage in a Broadway theater for seven producers. And they thought it was amazing, amazing. Uh, I can imagine. But they felt that it needed, you know, an off-Broadway atmosphere. And the mm -hmm. place we had been doing it was a, a Gothic wooden church, which was a, a beautiful, stunning environment uh -huh. for it. So they said we would, ha they would house the production. Uh -huh. They would take all the, uh, the hold the set and and everything, and find the right theater for us. Uh -huh. So we went back to the original church mm -hmm. to get our. Uh, set and they had given it away. Well, you, you, you're, you're now part of the, the mythology of Chekhov. Yeah. Uh, take, take us into your spiritual gesture because that's yes. quite a transition. It, it is. Well, one of the um, key things that Chekhov did was he saw that great actors and great performers often did a movement mm -hmm. that seemed to crystallize for them everything they needed at that moment, whether it was an athlete or an actor or a musician or whatever, often did a movement mm -hmm. that just set them mm -hmm. where they wanted to be. And this movement, as Chekhov looked at it, had a psychological element to it, mm -hmm. it had an emotional element, mm -hmm. a physical element, and um, a and really, it brought in a spiritual element uh -huh. that they mostly were not aware of, but that he was able to see with his uh, esoteric development. And he started using it as a means to transform oneself mm -hmm. from your everyday self into the character, mm -hmm. to align yourself with the soul of the character, the spirit of the character, the physiology of the character, the emotional life. And so, as I w began teaching this work, it was so remarkable for me. Uh, I got to teach all over the world. In you're talking about the Chekhov technique. The Chekhov technique. Yeah. And, I, and so I worked with people from over 40 different cultures, mm -hmm. and I saw that universally these techniques worked regardless of culture, education, mm -hmm. etc. And I started getting letters from people about gestures that I had given them to help calm their nerves, mm -hmm. t uh, just for everyday use. I started applying these gestures to everyday use. Mm -hmm. And I saw Im immense healing experiences occur. So I started developing it more and more and started coaching people in mm -hmm. private work and in groups. And we started using these gestures to, like, our international board of the International Michael Chekhov Association mm -hmm. had a very challenging event. And so as a group, we created a gesture mm. to help make the event come out the way we wanted to. Mm -hmm. and I notice did. your hands are shaping all the yeah, time right now. Yeah, <laughs> yes, and that, that's one of the things that you do. You, if you pretend that you're Mediterranean and are very expressive with your hands, you'll uh -huh. notice that when you're trying to address a topic, it's, uh -huh. this is really, I just, and you look and you see your hands are mm -hmm. expressing something. Mm -hmm. And that that's the starting point. I see that when I'm frustrated and I want something to happen, I'm clenching, mm -hmm. uh, contracting, and gripping, pulling the energy in, pulling the energy in, uh -huh. and well, it's it's really very hard to flow from this <laughs> condition, uh -huh. and this is a microcosm uh -huh. of the macrocosm, the the whole body. The whole body. Yeah. Then one could say that in the aura mm -hmm. and everything, you are actually drawing this energy in uh -huh. to this condition. Tight focus and.
uh, in the most primal way, we have two basic gestures, and we could define gesture to be a movement plus an intention mm -hmm. for our purposes. This opening process yes. and the closing process, uh -huh. which are expanding and contracting. Uh -huh. So this is like the pulse of creativity. And it's manifest in little mundane things like, gee, I'm trying to create something and, <laughs> ah, there it is. Uh -huh. Or the football huddle. Mm, ba -ba 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 -ba. Ah, let's go play. Uh -huh. So this, this contracting process. So it's a necessary function. We have to allow yes. it pulling in as well as the opening up. Yes, yes. Okay. And, and the Big Bang Theory and the sex act and the uh -huh. pulse of the heart and the division of the cell, expanding, yeah. contracting the seed into the great tree. Mm. The pulse of creativity can be found in this. Mm -hmm. And the average human being doesn't really use the full expanse. They do the contraction, but they, they don't or, exert themselves back out. Or the opposite. Uh -huh. They're way out here, okay. So they're not and they grounded. never get this. So they're ungrounded, uh -huh. or they're too anchored in the material and uh -huh. too contracted. Uh -huh. And uh, different illnesses can mm -hmm. be associated with overexpansion or uh, overcontraction. So we, we're we're heading back into something like Chinese five elements and exactly a lot of the Oriental. And, yes, and so. So the elements come into play in directing how the expanding or contracting comes. Mm -hmm. how, does it fly like air, or does it mold like earth there? We have about five minutes. Do you want to show us anything yeah. in particular? Yeah, that would be great. Um, I'm going to stand okay. and uh, just sh give you an example. Mm -hmm. I had... Um, I had uh, a, a person who was uh, very concerned her child was going overseas into the war. Mm -hmm. And she was holding such intense fear. Mm -hmm. S she could only picture in her mind that her child was going to be killed. Yeah, it was the a worst. daughter. Uh -huh. The worst. And so uh, sh she realized when that her whole body was crumpled like this with the uh -huh. fear. Uh -huh. And when I asked her to show me how her body would be if her daughter were safe, she couldn't move uh -huh. for about a minute. And then I said, well, suppose I was your daughter and you could tell me how would I be if I were safe. And, and so I stood in front of her and, and, she, and then she stood up and she emerged, she started doing it and sh as she emerged, she, she came up uh -huh. and opened her arms like this and tears just burst through and mm -hmm. this brilliant smile came onto her face mm -hmm. and uh, every was in a workshop I was doing and every, everybody started crying because sure. it was the first moment that she was able to even picture the possibility of her daughter being safe mm -hmm. and when she realized that her energy her fear would definitely be carried to the Middle East by her daughter. Mm -hmm. Whether it was knowing or unknowing. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. That if she could send her daughter to the Middle East with this energy, it mm -hmm. would free her daughter to be clearer and to be pre more moment. present in the moment. Yeah. So it's, it's wonderful because you can take uh, an old belief system and really physicalize mm -hmm. it and you, you want to have strong emotions and strong physical expression as big as possible. A very clear picture in your imagination. Mm -hmm. And when you align all of those, the repetition of the gesture from the old belief system into one that expresses the new be belief system mm -hmm. will align all your thoughts, your emotions, your spirit, your soul, everything will get in alignment. And if you have an old belief system mm -hmm. that you've changed mentally, but it keeps kicking in physically, it's because your body's holding, uh, your physiology is holding the old belief system. Well, this is what I heard when you, we, we met the first time. You were describing this whole idea of parts of the, the, the psyche maybe going ahead or the mm -hmm. spiritual aspect of the, of the component yeah. of the human being. And if the physical isn't in line, it will drag everything back like an anchor. Yes. So yes. you, you, you've worked out a way of 
Hope, helping people to express physically mm -hmm. and re mm -hmm. recognizing what it means yeah. internally. Yeah. So you can use anything. You can use Native American animal symbols. You can uh -huh. use angels. You can use god and goddess archetypes. You mm -hmm. can use elements from nature. Uh, you can go to numerology. You can go to astrology. You can go to your own imagination and find gestures that express mm -hmm. the energy you'd like to have. Uh -huh. And the m bigger you do it with your whole body, <laughs> the more quickly the cellular structure right. changes and then right. your chi, your energy, can flow fully out or fully in or uh -huh. anywhere in between. That's amazing. Well, I mean, we're going to wrap this up a yeah. little bit, but you've, you've gone through directing, writing and directing your own play in which you were starred very early yes. and uh, had quite an acting career. You, you've done stunt work. Yeah. And you got involved with the Chekhov technique in, in acting, and you teach Chekhov I teach, now. yes, yes. And uh, you've also developed the uh, spiritual gesture, mm -hmm. which you also teach and practice. Yes. That's, that's just an amazing career. It's been very exciting. A I've long been ways to go. <laughs> you've definitely gone through the ISIS character yes. of Into the Depth and back up. Yes. Well, I severely injured myself, which uh -huh. was a key element uh -huh. there in a stunt, and that set me forward really clearly on my spiritual path because I needed to use these gestures mm -hmm. to heal. Amazing. Well, I'd like to thank you very much, Lisa Loving Dalton, for coming to Changes and expressing all of this to us. And to the audience, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, Please use the phone number and email address at the end to get in touch with me. I'd be very pleased to help you with any of those comments. Thank you very much for watching. Lisa, thank you. Thank you.